where possible because there could be lava and things like that in the dung, especially during the summertime. Phil asking if we can identify some dung today. Ah, oh, we definitely can, Phil. That's one of my favourite subjects. <laughs> so I'll see if I can find some dung. So here we go. So it sounds like Phil might be a new viewer on board. So let me just grab a piece of dung here. We can have a look at it. So we've got a nice big piece there, but uh, not as big as it can be. So dung can serve a couple of purposes, obviously Getting rid of waste is one of them, but for some animals it's really important. Oh, sorry, I'll move that over. <laughs> Just sorting the lights out and everything. So, um, for some animals it can be quite a visual sign. So things like lions and leopards. Um, we were actually just talking about it last night that they uh, just do it on the road. So it's a very visual sign saying, hey, this is my territory. Um, so they can mark the territory with the dung as well. They can pass on information about if they're ready to mate or not. So there's a lot of information that can be given through dung. So the animal doesn't have to stick around and wait for someone to come up to tell them all about it. Um, and then other animals can actually utilize dung to find food and even water. So if you're in, stuck in a survival situation in the bush and you need to have water, if you find fresh elephant dung, you can actually squeeze it and get the liquid out of it. And you could even use some sand to filter that liquid through so it's not, not as uh, foul smelling or tasting. <laughs> but uh, I, I think we were discussing this the other day, weren't we, Senzo, whether we would actually do that or not. I think in a survival situation, I probably would. But I think Senzo decided, no, it wasn't for him, hey. <laughs> He's grinning at me. So this here, um, we could do a, a who dung it. This is uh, quite an interesting piece of dung. As I say, the size of it, the colour of it. Ah, people are way ahead of me. You guys are good. <laughs> so uh, everyone's saying it's elephant dung. So it is indeed the size of it, the colour of it. It's nice and rusty red. Um, we've got a leaf here. Um, looks like a broadleaf tree. Uh, so the acacias have um, smaller leaves or, uh, or in, in leaflets rather than a full leaf. Let's see if I can show you one of those. Oh, we've got a, a twig there as well. So elephants, you know, if they, they can take in, depending on the size of the elephant, they could take in maybe 200, 300 kilos of food, but then they'll only digest about 40% of that. So they could produce up to about 100, 100 kilos of dung a day. And literally as they walk it just drops so quite a lot of dung that gets left behind but because of that they only uh, digest 40 percent a lot of goodness is now left in that dung and that's why other animals will go to it and search among it so you get uh, especially as I say in the summertime you get a lot of beetles dung beetles will make use of it uh, other types of insects as well will bury in, in it lay eggs in it so there's a lot of uh, food from the insects um, so other animals will go and eat the insects from it but also fruits so in the Maruda season you can get full Maruda fruits and again if you're in a survival situation you can take those fruits wash them off and eat them and the Maruda fruits are really high in vitamin C it's probably it's higher than oranges so it's a really good fruit to have so as I say there's a lot you can get from the dung. Now the, the black rhino, uh, they use toilets and the black rhino will actually have uh, dung similar to this but their uh, twigs will be cut off at 45 degree angles because of the way the cheek teeth are actually formed. So this you can see that it's, it's pretty flat and uh, where did that other piece go? There it is. So it's pretty flat. Oops. Okay, I found it and then I lost it. There we go. So yeah, pretty flat here as well and that's just because the elephants the way their teeth are they're, they're just grinders so they'll rip the branch and then just roll the branch around in the mouth take the bark off and then obviously if there's any small branch that go with they'll eat that as well 
whereas the rhinos tend to chomp the side of the branch off and that's why it's 45 degrees so still looking that's one animal I still haven't seen in the wild is a black rhino and apparently they do occasionally cross through here Hi Velma, welcome on board, asking which rhino I like best. Um, I haven't had much experience with black rhino. Um, they're supposed to be more aggressive, but I think possibly it's because they live in thicker bush, so they, they tend to be in the thicket, so if you sneak up on a rhino, they get the fright of their life, and as do the white rhino as well. So I do wonder if it's because people get much closer to them without realizing. And they do also eat quite toxic foods like tamborti. Tamborti is one of the most toxic plants in the bush. You do not want to be cooking anything with tamborti. If I see that tree, I'll show it to you. Um, but you get an upset stomach uh, if you use it in the fire. But you can actually use a little piece in the fire to act like an insect repellent. Oh, there's another Neolable. See, look, they're everywhere. Amazing. And he's got very impressive horns on him as well.